Hi everyone, my name is Gemma. Thank you for joining the Paper Craft Society Box 38 Craft Along. This has been designed by the lovely Claire Rowlands of Daisy May Designs. Unfortunately, due to ill health, Claire's taken a step back from designing. And that's the reason why I'm joining you today. I am super pleased to have the opportunity to craft along with you. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's included in this box. So let's take a look. So there are three components to the Paper Craft Society box. The envelope, the inspiration booklet and the tissue paper filled with extra goodies. So we're going to first look at the envelope. Just open this up. So there are three pockets inside. You have your dies, stamps and your pattern paper. So I'll just take these stamps and dies, pop them on a white background so you can see them better. So you have three polar bears, one skating, one on a sled and another on top of a present. And these are all hand drawn by clay, beautiful images. And um, we've then got some snowflakes snowballs and this word stamp includes snow, winter, skater, frosty for example and then the die here cut out the three images and then have this square die which is used to frame the shaker square cups that are included in the kit. You've got the frosty sentiment and um, an outline die for that as well and then different snowflakes that correspond with the stamps here. Then we have some pattern paper. So we've got different tones of blue, yellow and white in this plaid pattern. And this blue snowy background. And then this lovely snowflake pattern paper. Then we have another snowflake design in different tones of blue and grey. It's a really nice one, I like that. And then we've got two pieces of white cardstock. This is a smooth cardstock, so I'm assuming Claire's included that for you to stamp and colour your images on. So I'm just gonna bring in the goodies from the tissue paper. So we look at the coordinating cardstock first. Got two of this um, blue paper that has a purple undertone. Two pieces of pink, two pieces of green, and two pieces of red. So nice selection there. We've got some ribbon. We've got some square shaker cups. I think there's five in there in total. And then we've got some sequins for your shaker. Then lastly, we have the inspiration booklet. So this is clear on the front here. Just have a quick look. So there's a section here for your extra downloads, which I'll show you in a moment. And then you have your contents of the box and then some lovely inspiration. So I'm just gonna show you one, because I don't want to, to spoil it. But this one's been done by the lovely Nikki Gilbert. Really like the color palette that she selected there. And I like the heart aperture really nice one so I'll just show you the extra downloads so you have six images here and they print onto A4 I'll bring them up a little closer to the camera so you can see them and these have all been coloured in by clay and you can use the dies from the envelope to cut these out they match perfectly in size You then have this blue and white background and it's the same words that are included in the word stamp. 
have the same then in red and white and two different color blues so we've got this snowflake background again in the blue and gray tones and then we have this additional one that has yellow green and red and that's really nice too we've got the blue snowy background red background so pretty much additional papers to what's included in the kit but I've printed them off because I like to make larger cards so that's all the downloaded papers so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a shaker easel card so if you'd like to craft along with me you'll need some square nestable dies I'll be using the creative craft products filigree border die set your kit I've downloaded the extra papers so I'm going to be using the pre-colored images but you can use uh, the stamps and dies in the kit and color them yourself I've got this blue snowfall background and the two snowflake pattern papers you'll need some blue cardstock and some white cardstock To make the easel base you will need a piece of 12 by 6 along the 12 inch side score at 3 and 6 you'll need an additional piece of blue cardstock that measures 6 by 6 two pieces of white cardstock that measure 5 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters One piece of pattern paper that measures five and a half by five and a half. An alternative piece of pattern paper that measures five and a half by five and a half. I've then cut a piece of card that will sit behind the shaker cup and it measures four and one sixteenth by four and one sixteenth. Okay, so I'm gonna take my card base, and I'm gonna fold and burnish along the score lines. So these are all mountain folds. So I'm just gonna fold that one, and then that one, and that forms the base of our easel card. So inside there, I'm gonna have this white piece and then this piece of pattern paper. This square will then sit over this panel here. Hopefully you can see that. So don't put any glue on this one, just along this panel here. And then that will sit on top of there. Then I have my white piece to go there and the snowflake designed to sit on top of that. So I'm just gonna glue those down. So the glue that I'm using today is a construction glue. This is the Kalal All Purpose Glue. This is a solvent base glue, so it really helps to strengthen the card. So I'm just going to line that up and get that in place. So as I said on the front here, you don't want to add glue on this panel at all, just along this one. And then I'm going to line this piece up. I'm 
make sure that the edge is flush together There we go. So I'm just going to set that aside now to let that dry and I'm going to work on the rest of the elements for the card. So I have my shaker cup, a square die from the kit and one of my nestables. So I've had a look to see how they'll look together as a frame. I think that's a nice size. So if you have the same dies, I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six. So the six largest one. Uh, all I'm going to do is line those up together. I'm going to add some washi tape to hold both dies together so there's a nice equal frame around each side. And I'm going to die cut that in white cardstock. So I have my frame here. So as you can see, that just sits nicely over the cup. And then I have the square that I cut will sit behind it. So I appreciate you can't quite see the acetate cup. It's, it's difficult. Hopefully you can see it against the blue a bit better. So as I sit the cup over the square that I've cut, I am seeing a bit of the cardstock of the back, back there exposed. So I'm just going to use my corner punch and I'm going to take, I'm going to round off the corners. So as I said, I'm just taking the edge off there so it'll sit better behind that shaker cup. There we go, that's perfect now. So before I start on the shaker cup, I just want to die cut the image that I want to use. So I've decided on this cute polar bear. I was skating, just looking down at the fish there coming out of the water. So I'm going to take this corresponding die from the kit. Line it up to the image as best I can. So hold that in place with washi tape and run it through my die cutting machine. So there's my image prepared. I'm just going to pop this on a darker background. Hopefully I'll help you see it better. So I'm going to add red tape all along the frame to attach it to the shaker cup. I thought I was die cutting white cardstock. <laughs> I've gone into the pattern paper as you can see. <laughs> So I'm going to add red tape to the frame, as I said. And I'm going to try and line it up as best I can to the inner edge. So I'm going to burnish the red tape to make sure that's attached. I'm just going to follow this all the way around. I'm just reaching the last edge here. But I have to, have to say, 
that these shaker cups are brilliant I've got them in the circle ones and it's really helpful if you don't like to make shaker cards because it just contains everything inside there once you add the back to it nothing's going to fall out so it's um, a really clever idea so I've burnished all those down So I'm going to take one edge off at a time and the edge that doesn't have the back and I'm holding you at the top. So I'm just going to make sure I line that up with the rest of the frame. It's exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to place the sticky edge down and then remove the back in from the rest of the frame and it'll all line up nicely. So I'm just taking a little bit off the one side there and this side as well because if I stick the one side down without the other it might be difficult then to get the backing paper off so I'm just going to hold that in place there ready to remove the backing then from the bottom edge. that should all nice, line up nicely. I'm going to use my bone folder just to press along those edges to make sure that, that stays in place. So that's done. I'm now going to add more red tape along the edge here so keeping with inside the frame and on the plastic edge So I've removed the backing of the red tape just in case as I'm lifting it up I might catch the cup and lifts and there could be sequins everywhere. So that's all prepared and ready to go. I'm going to take my envelope of sequins and just going to shake them inside. I think that's, that's enough. Spread them about a bit, see how many. I think that's okay. <laughs> so I'm going to line one of the edges up first and then stick down the rest. I'm going to flip it over and use my bone folder just to press in those edges that's in there nicely and we've got our cup ready to go looks like we've got a few stuck there there we are my cup is slightly warped but it's okay might straighten out now as I add it to the front of the card So I've got my easel card, make sure it's the right way. And we're going to line that up in the centre and glue it down. Place that there. Just 
sticking my hand underneath at the same time just to add that pressure onto it. Hopefully I'll give it a chance to grab then. There we go, our shake it easel card. So I want to attach the polar bear on the front there. So I think I'm just going to pop that up on some foam. Just have a look. So I'm just going to do the one edge here. I'm just going to set that in place. There we go. And then that will set up like so. I think I could have done with another piece because my cap is sinking slightly so I'm just going to see if I can take that back off there we are and I'm going to add another piece and a little bit just there that's the beauty of using acetate I guess you change your mind you can you've still got time to pull it back up so we go take two so we've prepped the majority of our card base so there's the shaker element and then I'll stand up like so. So I'm just going to do the finishing touches with you now. So I'm going to bring back the kit. I'm going to take the dies and I'm going to be using this frosty die here with the outline die. Just pop that on my desk. I want to use some of the snowflakes. So I'll take those out. So I've brought in some scrap pieces of cardstock. So I've got some blue, white, white glitter and silver glitter. So I want to die cut the shadow outline in blue. I'm just going to pop that on my plates. Then I want to die cut the wood frosty out of white cardstock. So I'm going to bring in some double sided adhesive sheets from Creative Craft Products. So I've got a piece that I've al I'm already using. I'm going to take the backing paper off the one side I'm going to place my white cardstock over the top and put the backing sheet back down And then trim it to size so that I don't have any wastage. I'm going to pop that back in the envelope there. So I'm just going to place Frosty on there. So 
so there's my outline die and my word die hopefully you can see that so I'll just set those to one side I want to do a little bit more die cutting so I've gone through and die cut all the snowflakes that I think I need for my card I'm just going to pop my dies back away I apologise because I've lost the footage of me die cutting them. My camera stopped recording and I didn't realise. just popping these back in place so I don't lose any because I don't know about you but these small die cuts they manage to uh, these small dies I should say they manage to get lost so also off camera I die cut an extra piece of the blue cardstock and I've attached them together. I've then got two pieces of frosty with the double sided tape on the back. So I'm going to remove this from the backing paper. There we go, so I'm just going to concentrate on one letter at a time because with the tape on the back it's become sort of quite flexible so it's easy for it to lose its shape. So I'm just going to try and line things up best I can. that down so I'm happy with that so I don't think I'm going to be able to get this extra one off because it doesn't want to play ball So I'm just going to leave it at the one piece there. So I'm going to bring in some foam pads and place these on the back of my die cut sentiment. So that'll lift that nicely there and it'll hold our easel piece in place so it's entirely up to you how far you want the sentiment to go up whether you want it to be quite down low as so or higher that's entirely up to you I'm just going to take the backing off And I think I'm going to place mine round about the halfway point and in the centre of the card. About there. Try and hold that up to the camera. That's how you'll see it front on. I'm just going to place it back down. For a moment so I've just grabbed my quick grab glue which is cosmic shimmer and I'm going to use that to attach some of the snowflakes I'm just going to have a dry run of placing 
few snowflakes on the front here to see if I'm happy with the placement. So I think I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue in the center of the snowflake and press that down. And once it's had more time to dry I'm going to lift up the edges there to give it a bit more dimension. So ideally you want to be using a dry adhesive on the acetate but as this is a small surface area it should be okay as long as they don't pick at it or something So I'm just going to add some gems from my stash. So I've got a variety of sizes here. I'm just going to pop them in the centre of my snowflakes. Now that will take a bit of time to dry because we're attaching them to a glitter card stock. There's the finished snowflakes there. I think the gems really catch the light. Just add that extra sparkle. Just going to pop that up into its easel shape. And I'm going to add some more snowflakes. So there's the final card, really happy with how that's turned out, really liking the blue tones, so I like the added details of the snowflakes and the gems and the polar bears just so cute. So it stands up like so, let's try and hold it in, into shot for you. And then we've got the extra snowflakes there on the bottom. So I'm going to add an image at the end just to show you how it looks from a different angle. So it folds, folds flat like so. I'm going to cut a piece of five and three quarters squared in white cardstock. And I may stamp an, um, a sentiment on there and add that on the back for me to write the message. Now there is a bit of bulk to this card because of the shaker cup so what I've decided to do is show you how to make a gift bag or a card bag for this card so I'll just set that to one side and show you that so to make the card bag you'll need two pieces of six and three quarters by seven and a quarter Along the seven and a quarter side, you want to score at six and a quarter and six and three quarters. You want to rotate so you have the two half inch score lines here at the top, and you want to score at six and a quarter. So do that for both both pieces. So you want to fold and burnish all the score lines. So 
Now we're going to do some cutting. So I have my half inch tab here at the bottom and my two half inch tabs here to the right. So at the bottom, there's a score line here you want to cut up to the first score line. You then need to remove this square here. So cutting up to the first score line and removing that one. Okay, so you'll end up with something like that. Then we're just gonna take a little wedge of this corner, of this corner, and this little tab here. And the reason we do that is because when we glue it together, it reduces the bulk. So it means we got we have a cleaner finish. So this is going to be the bottom of my card bag. So I'm not going to take any wedges off this one. So I'm going to cut this in exactly the same way. So I've cut the second piece exactly the same, however I've taken a wedge off the bottom here. So you've got two pieces, one with a straight edge and one with a wedge taken off. So the next thing we're going to do is attach them together. So I've got my quick grab glue and along this one inch, uh, sorry, half inch tab here. Add glue all along. place this piece over the top so when you're lining it up you want to make sure that the bottom score line matches the score line on the second piece so make sure that your box is straight if you have any overlap here at the top you can always trim that down I'm just going to flip it over and just add a little bit more pressure there. So I've now got my two half inch tabs here. I'm going to fold them over. Add glue to the tab which has the wedges taken off. And fold this edge over. So they should marry up. Like so. Add a bit more pressure. I'm just going to fold it back the other way. Press that down. So you'll end up with a piece with a straight edge here, and then you've got your bottom. So, as I said, the one with the tabs. The tab with the wedge taken off is going inside my bag. So I'm putting that down first, adding a little glue to these corner tabs here, pressing that down in place. Just make sure they grab. And then I'm going to add the collal glue on the edge. There. Just fold that over and hold it in place. So collal does take a little while to grab. does make your projects nice and strong so I'm just going to flip that up if it's standing up and I'm going to put my bone folder inside put some pressure on it then make sure everything grabs so we've got that nice clean score line so this is going to be the front of my card bag so while that's drying I'm going to cut some pattern paper to decorate the front 
So I want a piece of white cardstock that measures six by six and a piece of pattern paper that measures five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So I've trimmed my pieces. I'm just gonna attach the plaid piece to the white. And then I'm going to attach this piece then onto the front here. Place that down like so. So I'm just going to flip it over and put my bone folder in as some pressure. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the ribbon from the kit and I'm going to attach some handles. So I'm just going to roughly measure how much I want. If I think about this. So I'll just measure that for you. So it's approximately eight and a half. I'm just going to cut the second piece exactly the same size. So I've got my two pieces here. So I have preheated my glue gun this off to the side. I'm going to use that to attach the handles like so. So it's a bit difficult for me to show you. So what I'm going to do is add glue here and then attach it on the inside here. and then attach the other side. So they both attach on the inside like so. So as I said, add in a little bit of glue here. Press that down with my bone folder because I don't want to burn my fingers. So I'm going to do exactly the same, add in some glue here. Placing the ribbon inside then. that down so I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side and I'm going to make sure that the ribbon is placed so that it lines up with the opposite side So I've just tied a bow, I'm going to add some hot glue to the back here, nice big blob and I'm going to add that onto the corner there. Then lastly I've decided to add another polar bear on the front to have the corresponding die. 
again I'm lining up that as best I can run that through my die cutter machine so there's my die cut piece I'm going to add some foam to the back of it and then and adhere it to the front of my bag I'm just going to place that in the corner there there we go I'm just going to pop the card inside it's nice and snug in there so it measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter and then you've got a half inch tab there there we go I'm really pleased with that so you've got two for one there so thank you very much for crafting along with me today and a big shout out and thank you to craft stash for letting me be a part of today's craft along if you've enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up or let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content from me, then head over to my YouTube channel, Gemma Lee Crafts. I have thoroughly enjoyed playing with this box. I believe the subscription has now closed, but you can get this item on open stock and you'll be notified when it's available. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.